Hi, um, this is, um, I don't know, I, I have a ethics playlist and I've, I continue to add things to, the, to that and I do different things and different ethics videos and I have about 60 of them right now and I'm kind of going on a process of where I, you know, I do, I've do, done a series of videos on consequentialism, series on deontology, um, and various, various other ones, um, so, but next it's going to be, I'm going to start with the virtue ethics. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to, that I'm planning on going over in this, in this, uh, area of, area of ethics. <clears throat> but, um, and that will start with Aristotle and the, in his ethics, but, First, before I do that, I want to, you know, discuss one thing that has, has something to do with value, with value and ethics of value, and um, it's also in this anthology as well. It's Robert Nozick's experience machine. I, if you've taken any ethical theory class or anything like that, it, it's very common that you will hear of such a such a dilemma as this. This is a very, you know, it's a, I, I would say it's a, it's a dilemma presented to, to students that, you know, take even, even elementary ethics, ethics, ethics courses, but for sure in um, higher level ethics courses, for sure. <clears throat> so I want to read this, it's not, it's, it's not very long, I just want to. Uh, I just want to read this and then discuss the questions that are, that are along with this. Suppose there was an, uh, an experience machine that would give you any experience you desired. Super duper neuropsychologists could stimulate your brain so, so that you would think and feel you were writing, writing a great novel or ma making a friend or reading an interesting book. All the time you would be floating in a tank with, with electrodes attached to your brain. Should you plug into this machine for life, programming your, your real life experiences? If you are worried about missing out on desirable experiences, we can suppose that business, business enterprises have, re have researched thoroughly the lives of, of many others. You, you can pick and choose from their large library or smorgasbord of such experiences, selecting your life experiences for, say, the next two years. After two years you have passed, you will have ten minutes or ten hours out of the tank to select the the experiences of your next two years. Of course, while in the tank, you won't know that that you're in there. You'll think it's actually happening. Others can also plug in, plug in to have the experiences they want. So, so, so there's no need to stay unplugged to serve them. Would you, would you plug in? What else can matter to us other than how our lives feel from the inside? Nor should you refrain because of the few moments, a few moments of, dif of distress between the moment you decided and, and the moment you're plugged. What's a few moments of, of distress compared to a lifetime of bliss, if that's, if that's what you choose? And why feel any distress at all if, if your decision is the best one? What does, what does matter to us in addition to, to our experiences? So this is the... So basically we're talking about this. You know, say it's it, it, like like technology and psychology, and neuroscience is way far advanced, way way far advanced from where it is now. I mean, you know, even th thinking about th thinking about how how advanced all those things are now, it's way like times five hundred that. And um, it doesn't matter what experience we're t we're talking about. It's it doesn't matter if you if it's a experience driven by pleasure or desires or whatever it's I mean if there's a certain kind of feeling you want or whatever you could take those out and then you would plug into the tank and then you would be there for real time of two, two years so then the question is what does matter to us in addition to our to our experiences first we want to do certain things and not just have the, the experience of doing them in case of, of, of certain experiences, it is only because first we want to do, want to do the actions the, the way we want the 
that we want the experience of doing them or thinking we've done them. But why do we want to do the activities rather than merely to experience them? A second reason for not plugging in is that we want to be a certain way, to, to be a certain sort of person. Someone floating in a tank is an, inter is an indeterminate blob. There is no answer to the, to the question of what a person is like who has, who has long been in the tank. Is he courageous, kind, intelligent, witty, loving? It's not merely that it's difficult to tell, that there's no way he is. Plugging into the, into the machine is a kind of suicide. It will seem, seem to some, trapped, trapped by a picture, that, that nothing about what we are or of, of, nothing about what we are like can matter except as it gets reflected in our experiences. But, but should it be surprising that what we are is, is important to us? We should be concerned only with how our time is filled, but why should we be, be concerned only with how our time is filled, but not with what we are? Thirdly, plugging into an experienced machine limits us to a man-made reality, to a world no deeper or more important than that which people can construct. There's no actual contact with, with any deeper reality, though the experience of it can be, can be simulated. Many persons desire to leave themselves open to such contact and to a plumbing of deeper significance. This clarifies the intensity of the conflict over psychoactive drugs which some view as more local experience machines, others view as avenues to a deeper reality, what some view as is as equivalent to surrender to, to the experience machine, others view as following one of the reasons not to surrender. Perhaps what we desire is to live ourselves in contact with, with reality, and this machines cannot do for us. Without elaborating on the implications of this, which I believe connects surprisingly with issues about free will and causal counsel knowledge, we need merely note the, the in intricacy of, of the question of what matters for people other, other than their experiences. Until, one's fi until one finds a satisfactory answer and, and, and determines that this answer does not also apply to animals, one cannot reasonably claim that the only felt experiences of animals limit what we may do to them. So, the question here is, um, for for most of us, or how how, how much of us, if, if if any of us, does anything else matter to us besides our besides our our experiences? I mean, does do things matter to us if they're beyond just the the experience? Like, let's say. You have the experience of going through college and you know get, do, doing very well and feeling feeling good about that and graduating at the at the top of your, at, the, at the top of the class or whatever and then you go on to um, become this um, revered writer of say psychology and you become this person that you have been trying to be for a very long time and then you have the you have uh, one on one side you have the experiences of this which is a lot of um great experiences which would come with something like that given you're interested in that you would have a lot of ex you would have a lot of great blissful experiences with that but then on the other hand, does if some for someone who's who's done that, does um does who the person is or um the world itself beyond just the the, the subject matter to to the person? And I and then I think about like if we actually had one of these machines in this world. Um, I would think that there would be a lot of people in those tanks. There would be a lot of people there. Because people care about... Most, lots, of, lots of people, I might even say most, I might, might even as go far to say most.
most people, possibly most most people, but a, a lot a lot of a lot of people that that's for sure would be in these things because they care about feeling good because the common reaction to having a bad day or um, you know something happening that just you know makes your whole day horrible what you know what a common person would turn to is something that would make you feel better whether that's a certain hobby that you like to do or whatever or maybe drinking or doing drugs something, something like that that would, that would make you feel better and that's what a lot of us turn to because we're I believe that us as people are governed by our feelings and emotions and uh, and all that rather than um, rather than practical ideas of how to fix things rather than I, I believe that like hi I'm uh, in my room now sorry sorry I moved uh, anyway I just wanted to continue on this little discussion a little bit about Nozick's ex, 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 experience, experience machine. So mostly I just was trying to say before I had to cut the video um, and I cut the video because um, uh, somebody else was coming home so <clears throat> it, anyway um, Pretty much, um, there's the question of, does it matter to people? Like, I was discussing the little issue of how, if people have a rotten day, or if, you know, there's something, something that happens that really just, like, makes their whole, you know, everything that, everything that is going on feel just really terrible, then, uh, the solution that... Lots of people, most I almost, almost want to say most people use, is to do what they can to make themselves feel better, and that may involve anything as to reading, watching a movie, doing something I like, playing video games, uh, drinking alcohol, doing drugs, whatever you know. That's it. Varies from person to person, but the main idea is that the way, what I'm trying to get from that is that I think. People are driven and governed by their by their emotions, and uh, that it kind of seems to me that it matters to most people how they feel. It matters to most people the way that they feel, and the way how they feel and the way they feel is going to govern their actions and how they're going to go from here from here on out. And it seems like that in that it kind of may, may change throughout a person's life. Like early in life, they will let their emotions govern them and they will do whatever they want to make themselves feel, feel better at first and then they will learn that that's not, maybe not always the best choice because often that can mean worse things than, than not. But what I think that would infer to me is that there'd be a ton of people in these machines, in these tanks. If these tanks existed in this heightened neuroscience and neuropsychology and psychology and technology, if if those if those tanks existed, I would say at least half of the population if they if I mean if if it were to become a uh a um a non-expensive thing, just like cars became, you know, at first they were really expensive, and then only a few, a few people had them, and they became something that everyone has now. But it could become like that. I mean, it would. It would I mean, if if, the, if this thing were to be invented, at first it would be very expensive, and only, and only the, you know, like the top one, one or two percent would have it. Um, but as time would go on, it would there would, there would be a time where it would be affordable for for everyone, and when that time when that time if that time will ever come, I believe that most people would be in those tanks because they're governed by how they feel, and if they can have and if they can have ninety nine percent ninety nine percent percent of their life 
with, within those tanks with feelings of bliss and you know how, what, what, whatever the hell they want however they want to feel they can do that so and then they would only have like 10 minutes like 10 minutes every two years they would have 10 minutes out of those tanks to pick out the next two years um Nozick said 10 minutes to, to 10 hours they would have out of there to uh, to pick out what they're going to experience for the next, for the next two years. And, uh, and then because they're, they would, I mean, if they started this and, and they were in those tanks for two years, it's not going to matter to them anymore who, who they are or what they are, a deeper reality. That's not going to matter because they're going to have those, the, those feelings of bliss. But that's my view on that. That's my view on the experience machine. I believe that that, that that's how it, it, it would work out. That most people care way more about their emotions and their experiences, and like uh, look at searching for a pleasant feeling rather than uh, meanings of who they really are in the deeper reality. So it's like. It's like the reason, I mean, I, this is not the best example, but it's like the reason, like, um, someone who's not who's not very happy with their life could possibly be playing a certain video game for hours and hours on end, um, given a certain couple of days or so where they have the, where they have the ability to, they would be on that game hours and hours on end, like, for instance, I'll get, put a game out there so, such as, like, uh, Skyrim. I've had myself a little problem with that with that game because it's <laughs> this is not a very good example at all. I must say, but I have to say that that game is there's so much like things to do on it that it provides a different sort of identity to where like it's just I don't know. I mean I've I have not played that game for three months now. I've been off of it for three months, and uh, I believe if I start if I started again, I would not. I'd be on it for uh, quite a while, but I cannot do that anymore because I won't get anything done. And I you know, like when I'm when I'm playing that game, I don't care about other things, and I that that's not exactly a perfect a perfect example of what the experience machine could do because the the Nozick's machine could do like infinitely many more things and that would make it so that everybody would be in those tanks I mean what's the reason that everyone plays video games now it's because that's the same reason but anyway I want to hear your thoughts about this I really am, am interested in your, in your thoughts on this just because um, I want to know I want to know what you think of it do you think that people like people in general in this world you think that they care about meanings of who they are and uh, the deeper reality of the world and the like meanings of who they are really or do they care more about just um, getting you know doing things in life and making things good for them in life for the purpose of experiences and feelings of bliss and you know happiness in the in adult term in, in, in adult phrasing of the, of the word happiness but yeah, uh, please, I will really, I'm really interested in, in, your, in your thoughts on this. I'm just really, this is kind of like boggling my, my mind here just because there's lots of different, uh, lots of different ways you could, you could, I, I, I can go on talking about this little, this one little issue for a while, but I'll, but I'll, I'll stop here, I promise. So, yeah, thanks.